countdown, baby. Yo, 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 what up? What up? Rap throwback. And we're back. Back in the house. Hell yeah, man. How's it going? Going all right, man. Going all right. Ready to do another record. Hell yeah, man. It's the, well, technically it's not the first record of the year, but um, the first track by track one by the, for the year, I guess. Yeah, it's our first uh, um, track by track analysis. So we're casing uh, Superfly's Best Kept Secret. That's the title of the album. Best Kept Secret. Um, yeah. So this came out in 2011, which seems like forever ago, man. That's crazy. Um, I know. There isn't really a lot of information on this album out there other than, you know, the cover, the track listing. Uh, Fly 2K dropped the album. I haven't heard from them. I don't know who they are. Um, interesting label name, but I dig it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, Superfly. Uh, Amber. Uh, producer has done a lot of work uh, in the death row days, post death row, and uh, has worked on Dog Pound albums, Snoop Dogg albums, uh, a lot of shit. Um, so, yeah, kind of an underrated guy uh, from the Dog Pound. You don't normally think of him as a Dog Pound member. I don't know if he's officially a Dog Pound member, though, you know, but he's an affiliate. Um, nonetheless, he's always, he's always hovering, man. He's always there. He's there. Exactly. You always forget um, about him until you hear him again. Yeah. <laughs> and his style's a little bit different than the others, you know, um, Daz and corrupt, pretty straightforward gangster shit, but Superfly has a little bit of a comedic value, uh, a little upbeat, um, so a little bit of a different flavor, which is kind of cool to hear. Um, yeah. Did you have any thoughts on the album? Uh, yeah, to I start it was, off. You know, it's an upbeat record. It's still uh, the gangsta, more on the pimp side, though. I think. Um, right. But uh, I thought it was cool to hear you know Superfly doing his thing. He's got a lot of talent for sure, and he does separate himself from like Daz. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Different style, though. So true that. Um, so before this, I think he's came, he had two albums. Um, yeah. So that whoop de whoop that came out in two thousand one. And I believe the majority of that was recorded at Death Row when it came out. Um, oh, so yeah, that, was that was a good a one record. to go through. Yeah. Yeah. And then banging West Coast. I don't remember a bunch about that album. I know I bumped it a lot, but man, it's been a while. That came out in 2007. Yeah. So he had a little bit of a six year gap there. And then uh, Best Kept Secret came out after that. And that was four years later. So. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I have any other, uh, any thoughts on, on that going forward before we start the album. Oh, man, nothing much else no, to say. Yeah. I mean, nothing too right crazy. In, let's hear it. Yeah, let's just dive right in. So you can see the track on the screen, right? Oh, yeah. Check that out. Oh. Time to get busy. Damn, street racing. How are those volumes? Ah, uh, sounds good. So strap on your seatbelts, blaze the motherfucking weed up. It's time. The introduction. Cool to get an intro here. Seems like intros, actual intros, are old school now or something. I don't know. We don't get a lot of them, huh? I think, you know, the last couple of art. records that are new is like Nas and Snoop. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know if they were just missing good old fashioned intros, but that was a good old fashioned intro right there. So to start off, we have Ahead of Hours. 
And that features Daz on the hook, I believe. That's what it says, man. I kind of feel the vibe when niggas talking about me. They say I'm arrogant, sarcastic. And it's definitely bumping, man. It starts off with that bass. Mm-hmm. Dope beat. Mm. So, album starts off pretty good you get the intro and then you've got ahead of hours with daz which starts off a little upbeat kind of you know getting those dpg vibes going right out of the gate getting daz on the track yeah i think he calls himself the black brett Favre. Dude, I love that line. <laughs> yeah. Black Brett Favre always coming back. Yep. What uh, record was Superfly first on on Death Row? Was it uh, Dogfather? Damn, that's a good I, I question, man. Dogfather, because he was on that track with Too Short. Um... Let me see if I can find out. I love the Daz hook on here. Yeah, Daz killed it there. I get a guest spot with Too Short on the Dogfather. You nailed it, man. Oh. And then on that, in that same year, he came out with uh, Drew Down on the Underestimated album. I did? Or I mean, uh, it was the track was called Underestimated. It was Can You Feel Me was the album. Have you heard that track? I have not. Dude, he came out on Can You Feel Me? That's crazy. I got to listen to that record. I don't and mind he produced, he produced only in California. Ice Cube and Mac-10? Yeah, man. Or, I mean, Mac-10 and Snoop Dogg. Mac-10, Ice Cube, and Snoop. Ice Cube was on that track? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. He produced that track. Dude, based oh. on a true story, it's a dope record, man. Yeah. Well, that was a it. West Coast amp. Only California. Yeah. And it was like gangsta anthem, okay. too. In California. So, so far, what do you think? You know, about... Superfly's, uh, you know, new uh, production flavor. I dig it, man. I like it. Um, I don't feel like he's really lost a step. I think he's good. Um, yeah. You know, his past albums up until now. I know he did some work on, um, what was the name of that Dog Pound album? Maybe it was, uh, gosh, I'm going to have to look it up. But he's been, he was doing some work for Daz and Corrupt around this time. Um, was it dog shit? No, 100 Ways. Yeah, there we go. 100 Ways. The, hmm. the dog pound out 100 Ways. He did a good amount of work on that too. And that's what this album reminds me of. 100, 2010, and then this came out in 2011. Uh, yeah, man. I'll think of his production. You know, I uh, I thought it sounded advanced, um, mm-hmm. like an advanced Superfly. Um, it threw me off a little bit at first on my first yeah. listen, um, but I could still hear some some good old Superfly in there. And you know, mm-hmm. after the second listen, you know, I I got it. It's like okay, this is just an advanced Superfly, a little bit uh, better at production. And, uh, you know, this is all him, really. I mean, he's right. doing all the songs, the hooks, the writing, yep. controlling the beats. Is he the only guy who's producing on this record? Um, I was trying to look think... on online here. And it's kind of hard to tell. I think I saw... A little bit of Let jazz on here. So he's, he's collaborating, actually, with a few people. Yeah. We've got Goldie Loke in there, um, Short Chop, Problem. 
Let me see if I can find some producer credits here. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm looking on Discogs, and uh, the producer as Brody, um, Jelly Roll, Larence Dobson. Yep. Yeah. But Superfly does the majority of it. Superfly did one, one through nine, eleven, twelve, fourteen through seventeen. Yeah, so we sprinkle in a couple friends in there. But interesting. So number two, that was uh, that was a track before this, right? Yeah, right after the intro, that was a Daz track. Uh, this one is still a Superfly beat, then. Yeah. Which most of them are, but one to five for sure. This one is crazy though. It has a uh, the dog pound. Yeah, Daz and corrupt. Got the auto tune hook. What was this? Two thousand eleven. Yeah. Seems right. Seems about right. Trying to stay up with the times here, I bet. Wonder if a lot of auto tune was being done back then. I just remember auto tune was always getting hated on. Yeah, it was because I think you had a lot of new people coming out straight using auto tune and they sucked without it. Roger Troutman passed away. I think T Pain kind of took the reins there. And uh, T Pain fucking took that shit to the max. Yeah, you know, I give him his props for it because I don't know if you're going to have a hit with auto tune. Hey, might as well use T Pain. Yeah, and T Pain made it his his deal. So, I mean, that's yeah. what he does. He had a lot of good songs, though, you know, using it for the radio there for a while. Yeah, I don't know about his Our radio tracks. tracks. Oh, okay. I actually, I never heard a T Pain record. <laughs> but, um,. <laughs> You know, I know the songs that he's done for like uh, Bun B, uh, yeah. like Two Trill or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he's doing some stuff. Well, mostly for the South, I would say. Yeah, Birdman. Get money. Based in the jungle. Oh, got your got boy Short, Short Chop. Chop. Yeah. I like Short Chops. He yeah, acknowledges man, he does pretty good. that he's here without Ice Cube, which is where everybody's like, whoa, short chop. When did War and Peace come out? Was that 2007? War and Peace, Volume 1? Yeah. Man, that was 1998. 98, good lord. Short chop. Gone for a decade. When it popped up out of nowhere. Gone a while. I, think, I think short chop had an album too, right? I think he did. Yeah, he did. And he had a single with cocaine too. Mm. I remember bumping it surgery. once or twice, but uh, wasn't bad. I didn't don't end really up really remember it right now. Getting though. put in rotation, yeah. I'll have to give it another shot. Nonetheless, he this kills it dope. on this one. Beast in the jungle. Yeah, Beast I like this one. I'm glad he put short chop on it. Yeah, it's dope. Props to Superfly for seeking him out, man. That's cool that he was, you know, a fan enough of Short Chop to bring him in. Yeah, man. I, I feel Short like Chop Short might. Chop is a little blackballed. Yeah, wonder if he must have did Ice Cube wrong. Something. Something, man. Sucks to get on Ice Cube's bad side, I guess. Yeah. He's not really, he's like the opposite of 50 Cent, man. His bridges don't burn, really. He's got so many. Like, dudes, I don't know. How can you. Ice Cube just not... gives you the cold shoulder and then you can go fend and then you for go yourself. Broke. <laughs> yeah. 50 Cent just keeps kicking the dead horse, you know. Just over yeah, and over funny. again. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought Short Chop was pretty dope. Uh, I wish he would have came out with more stuff, though, you know, more records. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll have that Short Chop album this year sometime. There's yeah. got to be some jams, especially some short chop coming back features. to it now. 
right? Maybe do a short chop showcase. Who knows? Dude, yeah, I don't know. Let's dig up some short chop up there on the Spotify or whatever. See what he's got. All this, All this game. game. So this one's up at number five. Is it? Yeah, so that's Superfly for sure. It sounds like them too. Superfly has a, kind of a unique vibe to uh, like its tracks. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of kind of an intangible It does sound thing. it's it sounds DPG-ish though. I don't know if he's just yeah. kind of made his mark on the DPG brand, you know, that sound. Mm-hmm. But I think that's what it is. You know, Daz, who of course is the godfather of the DPG sound, does mm-hmm. upbeat tracks and he's one of the best at doing them. Yeah. And this is right up that same uh, flavor in my opinion. It's got that same yeah. vibe. That's a good point. I would say that Daz and Superfly are pretty good at doing that. Mm-hmm. So you don't really bump Superfly on the regular. I don't. Do you? Yeah. Um, more so than... I mean... I have a lot of his songs in my playlists. As far as the albums from beginning to end, I don't. I just kind of throw his shit into different playlists, dog pound stuff, or just overall stuff. Yeah. But I check him out quite a bit. He was on um, Chronic 2000. He had some good tracks on there. I think he even had a, a song on The Wash, that soundtrack that Snoop and Dre did. Yeah. Um, man, he's just been around. He's got good shit. He has been around, always always hovering in the background. What do you think of this track as far as, you know, the lead up? Well, up to the up to now, I think it's the it's starting off on the right notes. Um mm-hmm. A little upbeat, a little crazy, you know? Yeah. You, you kind of know what you're in for now. Um, so, so far, so good, man. I think uh, the flow so far and the pacing is good. Yeah, definitely uh, started off pretty strong. I dig that. Yeah. And it does sound a little bit pretty DPG-ish. Yeah. So how come I wonder Superfly and Daz don't really collaborate too much more any you know these days because Daz is still out there doing it and yeah, obviously yeah. Superfly has a lot of talent you know maybe it's just timing and money and who knows what else goes on right yeah it's hard to say man but as being one of the DPG dog pound staples, you know, you would think that these guys would collaborate more often because it's almost like they had this stable for a while. And, you know, most of them are still around, except for, you know, Nate Dog. Right. And Badass. Oh, yeah, Badass. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace to Nate and Badass. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know what's up with Superfly. I might have to go search him out yeah. on uh, social media see what he's doing when I'm smoking but, uh, dude I love this song I figured this song you would. makes me want to smoke <laughs> yeah I get it man I like I like this song too this is one of my like, favorite weed songs man like I would smoke to this many many times yeah. back in the day just throw on the the weed songs, blaze up, work out. What? And work out? Good shit. Hell yeah. Blaze up and work out? Mm-hmm. Damn. I can oh, hardly yeah, work out. 
without being blazed. Right? <laughs> like, was I can hardly work out sober. When you blaze up, I mean, you're just dead focused on whatever you're doing. It's crazy. When you're working out, it's just like extra focus. It kind of does. It's a better pre-workout than the caffeine shit, in my wow. opinion. The many uses of Mary Jane. I did listen to this record while working out, though, to be honest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. We got something in common, man. Yeah, I was just like... You know, this is like when I give it the first listen through, you know, the first playthrough. Yeah. It's usually at the gym, you know, to just to get it, Hell yeah. see what's going on with the record. And then, you know, when I'm just at home in front of the computer and I can focus a little more on it. Smoking, smoke, smoke. Yeah, this is a pretty good weed anthem, man. Oh, yeah. Probably... It's up there with my favorites for weed yeah. anthems. And that playlist that I have is huge, but this one's at the top. You have to do the top weed songs. Can you do it? Good Lord, that'd be that? too hard. Like, how many do I get? Ten? If it's ten, that's going to be way too hard. Make it fifteen, man. Be a little leeway. Fifteen. All right. Top 15 weed song. I could definitely put something together. You could do something with that. You could make some content out of that. I've been wanting to kind of uh, concentrate the uh, the weed playlist. It's so yeah. huge. I kind of wanted to drop some of the not so popular ones. Yeah. You got this track so That's on a good there? excuse to do Sounds it. Like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one's not going anywhere. <laughs> so let's that must see. be a Around... real art form to make in weed songs not any song can be a weed song no and you you gotta be high I don't know if you could make one without being high but Nonetheless, there we go. We have smoking. That's or when track. I'm smoking. Mm. And now we have. What do we got? Something better. Yeah. So we're still on that upbeat vibe, you know? Yeah, it kind of went, like, aggressive for the first four and kind of went a little more upbeat for the next four. This is something better, but I think Countdown to Cool is upbeat, too. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's got this kind of weird, I don't know if it's even G-Funk, but it kind of is. It's kind of like a psychedelic funk of sorts. Yeah, he's Some got that element. it reminds element. me of that era. Mm -hmm. I think he borrows from that too. And yeah. some of it reminds me of like, um, I don't know, like maybe 80s or 90s pop. Something that yeah. you might hear Prince on. Yeah, that's or, true. Uh, I feel like I get that vibe from him too. Like he's inspired by them. I could see that. That's a pretty funny line right there, I must yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> Treat it like summertime, jacket off. I'm like, dude, I wish I would have heard that line before. Right. And the, yeah, the line so before it led up to it perfectly. Said something about his hand on his dick. I don't yeah, remember, but something like, it that. like the summertime. Yeah. So he's got a good sense of humor. Oh yeah. That's uh, that's what kind of makes him, you know, separate from uh, Daz and Corrupt. 
Yeah, how come they, uh, you know, I wonder why they just never made like a super DPG group, you know? Just like all of them, they made a record. I'm trying to think. I think the like closest, Wu -Tang, you know? Yeah. Let me see. I know, let me look through the Dog Pound albums. There is one or two that he was in a lot, but not part of the group. And if there, this Dog Pound super group would be, you know, real, who would you nah. include in it? Would you include Trey D? Oh, 100%. Gotta yeah. have Trey D in there. Holy Snoop, Lope. Daz, Corrupt, Superfly, and Trey D. Mm -hmm. what about, I think I uh, could live with those guys. I don't know. You brought up Goldie Loke. I don't know. Goldie Loke is cool, but I don't really think of him as a dog pound member. No? Trey D was in it since the Death Row days, so he almost feels like he should be part of the group. What about Badass? He was alive. Uh, yeah, you can make an argument for him, but I yeah. would probably keep him out of the group. I mean, if we're making a super group, we don't want to water it down. Hmm. And I'm not hating on Badass, but I mean, he just doesn't bring it like the other members do. Jimmy! I like that line. Jimmy! Pretty dope. Um, Swoop G, was he ever considered DPG? He was part of that 19th Street Records shit. Yeah, and so was Crooked Eye, right? Yep, Crooked Eye. Hmm. Let's see. I guess so, we all can't be DPG, even if we are from the LBC. Maybe Lady of Rage? Yeah. You know, to throw a little... Has she ever you know, grown up DPG, female... though? Um, I've never heard of Maybe in know? the Death Road days, maybe. Yeah, maybe. No, maybe not. Maybe she would reference them, but I don't think she then, ever claimed it herself. Then we'd have to think about, like, RBX. Yeah. RBX. I don't know if he's DPG. No. Like, I wouldn't really I consider mean, him. I mean, but then again, the DOC has thrown up DPG before, but I wouldn't mm. consider him DPG. Yeah, I don't think either. I would put him in the and Dog Pound supergroup. I wouldn't either, and he was a big part of that, you know? Like, yeah. for Snoop's career and, you know, even the shit that he wrote for the Dog Pound. At the beginning, anyways. So, Countdown to Cool. This one's a little different, man. It's got that guitar. Yeah. This one is probably yeah. not produced by him, though, is it? Uh, what number is that one? What is this? Eight? Countdown to Cool is eight, yeah. Um, no, he didn't do this one. This one is damn no. funk. I think. Or is it uh, Christopher Lawrence Brody? Dobson? I think it's... Uh, Christopher... Brown? No. Lawrence Dobson, right? Of 15 or nothing? Yeah. See, yeah. Mine says Chris Brown of 15 or nothing. Oh, I see that on... Um, Track number eight. Hmm. So maybe Brown. J Black. Oh, wow. So there's yeah, two members. Know. There's two members of that production team. That's what it is. Mm. So Brody okay. and Lawrence. You can kind of tell that this one isn't Superfly, or at least yeah. that there's some, there's some extra flavoring on here that's uh, not out of the Superfly book. And a little, little bit out of left field with that guitar, I think. Yeah, it's got a different vibe, you know. It's well, it's the upbeat, the bass though, line, it's, the everything, yeah. Still got a little different vibe to it, though. It was a good vibe. I think he did good with it. It's cool. We've got heard me now. Player shit. You gotta love it when robot. Voices get to curse. Yeah. So this one's Superfly. 
Yeah. This one's pretty funky. What do you think about this track? This track has an interesting vibe to it. Almost like... It's almost like a jazzy feel. Yeah, it feels like for. I could be at like an award show or something. <laughs> I don't know, like dude, I'm thinking like Las Vegas. Transition music. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Las Vegas. This would be yeah. perfect for the uh, casino level in Street Fighter. That's right. Casino. It's got a casino style to it. My money. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a. Uh, Remember uh, some of the Tekken? Gosh, what Tekken game was it? Where you... Six? Was it six? I think it was six. Six had some great music on there. Kind of mm -hmm. jazzy. Kind of feels like Tekken a little bit. Man, I missed that game. Dude, you remember creating your characters and changing all their shit? Oh, and how that, that music would just Tekken get stuck Tag. in your head? Oh, was that Tekken yeah. Tag? Tekken Tag had the... The yeah, the shop and the music was just so upbeat, and so upbeat and catchy. Yeah, you, did you'd stuck, wake up listening to that music in your head? You'd wake up. And I know, you'd man. Up in my closet, in and I'm like, tech and music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whoever made that track up is a bastard, man. That shit used to be stuck in my head so much. I'm sure he hated it as equally as bad as we did. Yeah, <laughs> he probably. This sure was cool. Stuck in his head too. Yeah. Hey, they don't they don't make fighting games like that anymore. You gotta buy all your costumes and shit. Oh, right? Microtransactions. And they look ridiculous too. I don't like it. That's one thing I didn't like about Soul Calibur is all the stupid ass costumes people made. Like you kind of pulled me out of the element of it, you know? Like, yeah. Okay, you just made yourself with a big penis. Good for you. I know, right? Freaking, uh, our homie was all into making penises and shit like that. <laughs> His Baldo character and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Fucking Baldo. Yeah, it's a, I don't know how we, no, I do know how we got to that topic, but going back to this song. It's got a cool vibe to it, like you said, man. It's almost like casino, casino jazz or something. Got some samples here, something. Hey. I swear I've heard of this guy's voice before. On a P.D. Pablo record, Death Row One. Yeah. Hold on. I don't know if I went black or not, but hold on a sec. Yeah, dude, you went dark. Ah! We live, folks. We live. You know, technical difficulties. If you watch in the YouTube, you'll see Dre is just in the pitch black over here. Sound wave. Went dark out here, man. What you need? This song is kind of funky, dude. He goes, he talks a little Jeez, bit of Spanish. Nachos. I mean, I guess. Oh, yeah. What do you say, arriba? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like hard Spanish. Hey, he's got some Spanish roots, man. He did that one track with uh, Kid Frost, Corrupt, and Don Cisco. Oh, yeah. Remember that, Mamacita? Yep. I remember now. Mamacita, Mala Senorita. Animal. All right, this is just a smooth dim track here, you know. A lot of hip shit on this record, I think, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's a pimp track for sure. He's not really too much into like talking about drug selling and not even that much about violence, really. I mean. It's, he still has some gangster shit in here. 
but a lot of it is really just pimp shit. I gotta take a break for a minute. It'll just be a sec. All right, man. I pause it. All right. So my bad here. Um, so we're talking about this track being more on the pimp side. Yeah, for sure, man. Got that little whistle in the background. It's a little, it's a flute, my man. It's if you're flute. a pimp, man, you gotta have someone behind you playing the flute while you're walking around. Yes, sir. I agree. When I was a boy, I don't know how old I was. When, let's see. When my parents tried to get me into band, and we did band for a little bit. Oh yeah, I remember they. They, they showed me the flute and said, play that. And then it turns out that I could not because my teeth were fucked up. Oh, damn. I'm glad. I didn't. I don't want to be behind no pimp playing the flute. <laughs> That's funny shit, man. Yeah, I must have been like... Yeah, dude, I, had, I didn't even remember. I didn't know that story. I remember you were playing the drum. Mm-hmm, I played band. drum and clarinet. There you go, yeah. And clarinet. No flute. Well, that was cool, man. Fucked up. Clarinet's huh. much more manly. Yeah. I'd say so. <laughs> I think it worked out in your favor. I think so. Cut that bitch off. Cut that bitch off. So what you need... All right, when I like it. Oh yeah, when I like it. This one's a little different from the last one, you know. It's more, uh, I don't know if it's for the ladies or something, but I could say, yeah, it feels like it's more for the ladies. Yeah, this is um, this style seems experimental for him. Yeah. Does he do this? voice through the whole song all right yeah this seems like him no this sounds like a club banger though you know yeah Uh, oh this is when i like it yeah Oh, that's Young Pilot on the track there. That's just his voice. Huh. Yeah, he uh, he rapped on the Blue Carpet Treatment. Oh, um, really? He might have been on a couple of other Snoop projects. Oh, yeah, Young Pilot just sounds like that. Imagine. Imagine just sounding like that. If you talk like that. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, you sound like a really small dude. Calling people, what's up? <laughs> you hear that voice, it's almost like you gotta look down, like. Yeah. Some little guy yeah. talking to me. A mouse. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, you know, Superfly's flow is pretty cool on here. He's got a, he's got a certain pattern to his uh, rhymes. Yeah, this is not something I normally would bump, but the beat's interesting, man. Very bouncy. Yeah. He uses that auto tune. It hook. kind of goes with the entire theme of the record, you know, which is just kind of upbeat. Right. Isn't it? I mean, the topics aren't even all that deep so far. No. Mostly it's just pimping and. Not, you know, not giving a shit about chicks, bitches, yeah, him shit. Pimp shit. Get my end of the week on. I remember when my end of the weeks didn't seem just like any other day. Those were the days. Right? Now they all mash together. I know, man. My end of the week, I'm still working. The older you get, the the more the more uh, mashed together the days get. Yeah, it's all a blur. I swear, man, I, I can't even keep 
my Monday straight sometimes. It'll be Tuesday right. or Wednesday and it'll feel like a Monday. I know, just think about when football's done. Then you got no Sunday marker and everything's just a blur. Yep, then you're all discombobulated, don't even know what day it is. No, and basketball don't help because that shit's on like randomly. Every day, yeah. <laughs> so now we got Fall in Love. Yeah. Yep. It's not bad, you know. I dig the, the beat. Yeah, I dig it too. I don't know if it's a track that I bump a lot, but the beat's pretty cool. It doesn't like, you know, tarnish the record as a whole, really. It right. just kind of keeps it going, really. And not in a bad way. It's not but, like a complete filler track. No, it's not. But this is kind of what he does. You know, this is kind of what sets him apart from the other guys. Is sort of like upbeat type of shit falling in love anyways for a pimp Dre knows all about that he's a pimp he's an in love pimp <laughs> yeah hardcore pimping big pimping over here big pimping <laughs> Beat it up like Rambo. Yeah, man. Should have said like Rocky. Think he's got his characters mixed up. Oh, you know Rambo, Rocky, Bus, Bike. These rappers, man, they just mix shit up. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> there is a little bit of that, isn't there? Just figure it out, guys. Come on. Just figure it out. It rhymes. It sounds good. I guess Re Rambo beats people up too, I guess. You look so sexy, sweet, that I don't even wake you up. Just excuse myself. Uh, but yeah, the, the lyrics on this are kind of funny. Yeah. Where he just kind of wakes up. Like, well, I'm sober now and I'm awake. I think I'll just sneak out of here. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I could see that, man. I would be like, yeah, I don't want to. I've done that a couple times. Peace out. Like, oh shit, what did I do yesterday? Oh man, fuck. I'm getting out of here. I'm just gonna sneak on out of here. Yep. Everyone's still asleep. Good. No doubt. Best kept secret. This one's got the cocaine and Goldie Loke. The title track. And Melee. Rest in peace, young Melee, I believe. Who is Young Melee, or what? Isn't that, that was uh, Ice Cube and Dub C's DJ, wasn't it? Was or it? Or producer? Doesn't ring a bell to me. I'm gonna look him up. Sounds like an anthem track here. Brr. Brr. He's on his Geese Howard here. Yeah. Say, Sometimes he sounds like Geese Howard if Geese Howard were to rap. So, let's see. Young Melee. Born in California. Nice. Gangbanger. Real gangbanger. Uh, Real gangbanger. Started with the Lynch Mob. Worked with oh, King shit. T. It's OG, man. Yeah. Let's go. Worked with Crazy Tunes. Oh, he's legit. Is he still alive? Uh, yep, still alive. Young Melee. Nice. All right. 42 years old. We take back that rest in peace. Yes, we do. Give it back. <laughs> 42, he's just, uh, man. Hey, he's That's our us. age, man. Yep. Yeah. 
Hell yeah. You know, for being the title track, it's a little underwhelming besides the uh, features on it. Yeah. Let's let's wait for the hook before I cast judgment, though. How can you not bob your head to cocaine on this? Cocaine can save a track sometimes. Yep. Is that the end? No. I believe so. Nope. There's melee. Nice. Did you hear the track on here where they, they gave uh, No Limit props? Yeah, I do remember hearing that lyric. It's like, he's down with No Limit, something about KLC or TLC or something. He gave a shout out to the producer there. Um, yeah. That's a little surprising because, you know, No Limit has been long past dead around this time in 2011. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, I listened to the True album, the latest, at least like the mm -hmm. first half once. Starts off pretty good. I'm Does not it? sure how it ends though. It's the one, it's the album they got with Hootie Hoo! Hootie Hoo! And that's Master P, Sea Murder, and. Silk the Shocker. Silk the Shocker. I was like, I'm gonna have to listen to this again and tell Soundwave how dope it is and troll his ass. Yeah, I'm not gonna listen to it. <laughs> I don't care how dope it is. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I ain't rolling with the tank. Oh, that's crazy. I'm surprised you you popped that in, man. What what inspired that? I don't know. It was probably on random and. You like the song? You're like, something, oh, something. I think Hootie Who came up, and I was like, what does the rest of this record sound like? So I went for a walk and just listened to. I think I got to like half of it, and I remember like the first half was like pretty good actually, and then it kind of just started going down and less memorable. I was like, all right. We still yeah. on that? What year was that? Jeez, I don't even remember. Oh, but there was no Snoop on there. Yeah, I've used a trick here with Deacon of the Church, who I have no idea who that is. Dude, this one sounds like it came straight out of LA. Yeah. And when it's funny, when I first heard the beat, I knew it. I was like, this gives me that LA vibe. And then they start the lyric off with some easy E inspired words, you know? Yeah. Down the, down the street. And I was like, yep, Superfly did this one good. See who this guy is. Deacon of the Church. Not in Wikipedia. Nah. <coughs> Deacon of the Church. Church. Dude, I loved it when they used to say church all the time. Yeah, man. Church. That was pretty cool. Church. I mean, that was pretty influential back then, so much so that, like, you got a dude who named himself that. Deacon of the Church. The Deacon of the Church. Back in the good old days of the West Coast. That was some Snoop Dogg shit, man. I think he started it, right? I don't know, man. He seems made it like he did. Popular. Yeah. This auto tune. There's a little bit of auto tune there, isn't there? In that guy's voice. Mm, yeah, I think you're right. It, it reminds me of. Uh, 
that easy does it shit from like eight ball rolling i think it's eight oh ball yeah rolling. like this, definitely um... like do you remember the little auto-tune flavor they used to give those tracks back then on the ruthless days just barely a little bit not as bad as the auto-tune you think of now or even before in the old days you mean with like the music the, the music effect or are you talking the about hook. the voices? The voices. The hook. I'm trying to yeah, think. Let's see. Eight ball chunky. Yeah, I'm trying to think what song, but it's hard to go in the, yeah. the database when I'm bumping something else. But I, I know what you mean. Like his voice has like a really like minor like I think the uh, the filter's called the flam. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, like, I like that they did that with this with track. It back in the day. Nice. It kind of keeps that LA vibe to this track for me, anyways. Pimp, pimp, hooray! I feel. This has Damani and Maestro. Mike Estro. I don't know if that K is supposed to be enunciated or not. What track is this? Number 15 here? Yeah. Did Superflight do this beat? I think so. Uh, let me see. Yeah, 14 to 17 he did. So the rest of it, except for the last track, 14, 15, 16, 17. Hmm. It's kind of a laid back track, you know, the beat, you know, I feel like it's a bridge. Yeah. But it, it almost it kind has of that, uh, you know, what we noted earlier of that little Vegas jazz vibe to it. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it reminds me yeah, of. Yeah, what is it that gives it that vibe? Is it the... It's got to be like that... I don't even know what that instrument is. It's in the background. It's got that constant... I don't know if it's I a would... trumpet. But either way, it was probably on a keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Probably a synthesizer or a, some sort of chord or... Who knows, man? There's so many different things you can do on a keyboard now. Yeah. You literally make everything on a keyboard. Oh, this. So I believe... Hmm. I don't remember which one was Damani. Some of these guys were in the Superfly's group Western Union. I don't know if you remember them. Yeah, I but, did. Uh, they had was... like one record. They came out the EP, or no, mixtape and the record, I believe. And the mixtape was awesome. The record, not so much. Hmm. Um, but I think Damani was in Western Union with Bad Luck. And I feel like there was one more guy. I don't remember who, though. Dr. Dre introduced him to Cash. Cash. Yeah, it's not too shabby of a track. I know I'm fly, but my God, I'm fly, am I? Incredible. I know I'm cool, but wow, I'm that cool. I'm the only nigga to do you bad. 
I'm the pimpest nigga you ever had. But check this out, bitch. Look, I ain't the last one. You know I'm flying everybody say I'm handsome. But I'll be looking right past them. You can even ask them that fuck a bitch, suck a dick is the anthem. I laid it down from the tippy top. So this has bad luck, Damani and Toke the smoke. You recognize these guys? I think you on mute, bruh. Boom, am I back? You're back. Oh, okay. What I was saying is uh, this is more of that uh, comedic pimp shit, but um, Toke the Smoke, I feel like I've heard that name recently. Did we see that on another record or something? I don't know. It's not ringing a bell. I thought maybe Damani was somebody familiar. He's from Western Union. Okay. And he was on the last track, too. Who's this guy, though? Is this... I think that's bad luck. He kind of sounds like uh, Sugar Free. I think he's got yeah, some Sugar Free style. I'm not that big on his style of rapping. Hmm. When he was in Western Union, he was kind of like the guy you would always laugh at. He's a oh, fat okay. dude in, in real life, but... Um, But he would mm. always make fun of himself in the songs. I think he's too close to Sugar Free, at least on this track. Or that's just my untrained ear holes. I think this might be Damani. You don't sound too bad. Jesus peace. Better turn that around with Kanye coming in the room. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that was funny with Jesus. He kind of has that, uh, that voice is kind of like, uh, what would you describe it as? Um, it's almost like that 80s, 90s pop shit that I was talking about earlier. Yeah? Like 80s R&B or yeah. something? Well, like something you'd hear Prince do or something like that. What would you call oh, that? Yeah. Would that be pop? Yeah, I would, I would consider that some pop. Some soul pop, maybe? Yeah. Not bad of a track, but not my cup of tea. I would probably skip it. Yeah. It's kind of a filler. Yeah. So we got a couple more tracks to go, I believe. This one sounds cool. Yeah. This one's pretty cool. This is another one of those like laid back ones that you know, UFC. That was a cool. He's got a couple of cool lines throughout the album. Not a, more than a couple, but he can write some good shit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This song's cool. I dig it. It's super chill. I like it. I think it's pretty chill, of course. It's got a good length, too, so you can really uh, get into it. A lot of tracks you can get into, and then they just kind of abandon you right off the bat. Like, oh, the song was only two minutes. Yeah. I hate They that. leave you hanging. Yep. Yeah. Or they just 
get up early in the morning and leave. That's right. Don't even say <laughs> bye. I don't remember the hook on here. That's not a bad hook, you know? It's just kind of laid back. not much to this track really you know no. it's simple but I, I i dig the beat man i think it's cool it's like that old school shit he does a lot of uh the lyrics are you know i'm blah 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 blah, blah like i don't know Doing the Dougie. I don't even know how to do that. <clears throat> I think it's a dance. The Dougie? Oh, I think yeah. you're right. I was thinking Dougie Fresh or something. Tyson 50. I don't know what he meant by that line. I see it on, on your face like Tyson 50. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Tyson and 50 have any kind of relation. Oh, wait a minute. Do they look no, like Tyson. each other? No. I don't know if 50's I don't even know what he's has. trying to say. Well, he's talking to a chick, right? Right. So... If he's talking to a chick and he says, I see that look on your face, Tyson 50, I know that he, he could be uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Gotcha. 50, I don't know nothing about. Did he ever get accused of shit? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I can think of. I mean, he got shot in the face. See, I'm thinking, what's her face uh, accusing Robin Tyson Gibbons. of rape? Yeah, that's right, Robin Givens. Make you see sports like Robin Givens. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> hey, that was MC Ren. That's right. That's funny. <laughs> G Funk Martian. This is the last song. So, yeah, here he's channeling that old G Funk. George Clinton type of shit. Yeah. Parliament. Yeah, for sure. Oh, he even has dan dan uh, damn funk on here. Damn funk did the beat. No shit, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Damn funk. Yeah, he really uh, lets this one ride out. Look through the people, Funk is here. Funk is here. Life's so crazy, still a Trump baby. You ride with a modern day Funk is here. Hmm. Let's see what you've done, damn Funk. I thought he was a throwback guy, but like everything I see is from like the 2000s. How do you feel the record has ended then with this track? You think it's a cool way to finish it? 
Well, it's not too bad, you know. It's kind of like the track that's different from the rest. Got damn funk on there. Yeah. I mean, the drums are different. It's not too bad. Kind of might have chose a different. Yeah, I might have chose a different track, but I mean, I can't. I can't knock them for it either. I don't know where this track would fit otherwise. Yeah, I, I don't know. Venus Saturn. Now, how many records does Superfly have? Three albums. And then a, what he's is, done with... This is, is this the his third. last one, then? Yeah. Is he still doing shit? Um, I think... I'm trying to think if he was on anything that I can remember after this. Um... I'm sure he's had some features. Um, he was on 100 Ways for the Dog Pound, I know. Uh, looks like he was on a Crooked Eye track in 2012 after this, and that's it. Hmm. He was on the Daz album, D-A-Z, and then Revenge of the Barracuda for Dub C. Well, that's it. I wonder what else he's doing these days then. That's a good question. This label that this came out under, it's not his label? Actually, he is the executive Flight. producer. I'm gonna say it would make sense, Fly 2K. Yeah. Superfly is 49 years old. Get out of here. Yeah. About as old as Snoop then. Mm hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, not a whole lot of information on him out here. Yeah. Well, overall, you know, since we're towards the end here, why don't you just give me your thoughts? What do you think about this record as a whole? Well, as a whole, I think it's a pretty good album. I mean, when you're bumping the Superfly shit, you know, you're kind of, you're not going to get that raw gangster dog pound shit you would get from Daz and Corrupt. You know, this is kind of like a, it's like a side story, but you know, he's an honorary member. Um, but he still stays true to his roots um, while still giving you that dog pound sound. I mean, pretty much all his albums are similar to this, where it's like upbeat and pimp, yeah. pimp shit. And, um, not as experimental, maybe, on the other two albums before this. But um, as a He's whole, I like it, man. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, I like this album. I wouldn't... I mean, I'm, I'm thinking like right around, you know, eight is kind of what I'm thinking for this album. But yeah, I mean, I like it. I like uh, a lot of the tracks on here and I don't bump it from beginning to end usually, but I got a good number of these tracks on my playlists. How often do you listen to this record a year? Just songs in it or just the record as a, as a whole? Oh, you probably hear the songs more than just the record as a whole. Yeah. Because right? yeah. sometimes I don't even bump a whole record as a whole ever again. I just yank out my right. songs, put them on a playlist. And that's kind of where this is. I mean, there's some times where I'll run into a Superfly song and I'll be like, all right, let's go bump that album. But that doesn't happen very often. 
but I mean, he's always coming up in my playlist. I can even count the times he comes up, but he's oh, yeah. in there quite a bit. You know, he doesn't ever come up on my playlists. Um, not because I'm a hater or anything, but uh, he's kind of a like if you love DPG that much, you'll you'll find your Superfly. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and but I'm I like this record. I think you had nailed the score about an eight. Um, there's some parts. There's a couple songs that do feel like filler, you know. Yeah. But most of them are good filler. But there's that one that I would totally skip with the, uh, I don't know. Incre- is it yeah, incredible? I incredible. I, d- I didn't really care for that track. Track list. Yeah. Yeah, it but, was incredible. Yeah. But for the most part, I think the tracks are solid. Um, you know, can you pick three of your favorites? Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> I like Beast in the Jungle is dope when I'm smoking. And then if I had to, I probably would go with, um, I'll pri- I'm going to go with Countdown to Cool. Countdown to cool. Well, I uh, I agree, man. I like Beast in the Jungle. When I'm smoking is a hell of a cool track. Um, and you know, just for kicks, I'm gonna go with uh, number two ahead of ours with that Daz hook. Yeah, yeah. I think that starts off the record right. And um, then you still have you know tracks like Move Too Fast with Daz and Corrupt that are good. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then you got like some of the easier stuff, you know, um, there was two, still there's two or still the two, I mean, yeah. and then, but, but yeah, those three would be mine. I would give it, you know, you gave it an eight. I'm going to give it eight Timmy's. Eight Timmy's. Oh um, yeah. The order of the, the, the tracks, you know, I don't, it's not like this whole album told a big story or anything. It's right. just kind of a, uh, you know, Superfly's adventures and um, not in any timeline to really tell a story. But there, I saw nothing wrong with the order of the tracks. You know, I think the last track is kind of weird, but um, mm-hmm. where else are you going to put it? It's almost like a like a quick groove track that he right. raps to or something, you know? Um, yeah, when you do one of those tracks, it's almost like you got to put it at the end just because it kind of yeah. separates itself from the, from the album. It's just yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, did you? Oh, you probably don't have this record hard copy. I bet. Did no, it come I do out not. Hard copy? It did. Yeah, you can get it hard copy, but I didn't get it hard copy. Just ended up getting it off of uh, iTunes. I'll have to look for it. Post a link up in the description of the video. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's a. It was a fun record to check out. I worked out through it. You know. Like like we were talking about, um, yeah, man. You know, the first time, and I was like, "This is crazy." <laughs> yeah. The first time I heard it, I thought it was crazy. Uh, the second time, it started to sink in, though. I got it, and I was like, "All right, this is still Superfly," you know. Yeah. It's kind of an advanced Superfly, and he's got some uh, some other people adding some flavor on here too. So, um, it's I like cool. Short Chop was on there. That was good to hear. Short Chop. Uh, yeah, that was a highlight really here much from him other than you know what he did with ice cube on but he War killed Peace. it on here yeah he delivered man um the only thing i think is you know the the album started off pretty aggressive and then just went to like upbeat and chill yeah. um i don't know if you can change that up at all but uh yeah something i noticed the very beginning is like super aggressive like the first four or five tracks yeah, no, you know, I gotta, I gotta say, towards the end, um, you could say it got it got a little weaker, mm-hmm. but it did get a little bit, um, you know, exhausting towards the end there. And I think I started to feel it around maybe incredible or something, or I feel, um, yeah, where you know you start looking at your watch like, how long is this song here? You know, mm-hmm. um, but some records that like they just go like from start to finish and it just like you don't even notice like 
But this one, towards the end, I, I started to feel like it got a little tiring. Um, and that might just be from that incredible track or maybe just the flow of the record, how you were saying well, it starts that... off super energetic and then mm -hmm. gets lighter, it gets softer or weaker towards the end. And you know. to be fair, I think more of our flavor is what we heard at the very beginning. You know, we don't listen to a whole lot of the laid back, you know, type of stuff or the, you know, the pimp shit, the, the funny pimp shit. I don't feel like there's a lot of that in our catalog. Probably not. But, um, but yeah, I was just saying that the beginning of the record is kind of more our style, but then like the, the last part is, you know, your classic Superfly Mm -hmm. uh, and what he brings to the table, which is still good. Um, it's yeah. just different than. Yeah, and we're... honestly, I can only give it one strike for one song. I can say that there's only one song I don't really like, you know? Yeah. The rest of it, I like it, but I can still say, you know, which ones were stronger than others, you know? Right. Like, like we're just talking about. Um, so, all in all, I think that the score of eight is pretty well deserving, in my opinion, you know? So. I don't know, man. That's cool hey. shit, though. Um, cool record. Superfly. This is his third record. I don't know what he's yep. doing these days, but uh, you know, hopefully he's still out there, man. Staying on the radar, but you never know with these OGs, man. It's hard to say. I, mean, I feel like they probably have already um, I mean, moved on to the next chapter. Superfly's almost 50, you know, so I don't know how much music he has left. Um, all these guys are a little... Daz and Corrupt, I'm sure, are up there in age, too. And they're yeah. still doing it. And so, I mean, yeah. it probably just depends. Everyone's motivation's a little bit different. Yeah. Well, I think that the title of the album, Best Kept Secret, is, you know, pretty dope title. Um, because yeah. he is kind of like DPG's Best Kept Secret. Mm -hmm. At least DPG's, you could say the West Coast, Long Beach, whatever. Right. And well, he's, he definitely... He's helped influence the sound you know as yeah. early as you know some of the early death row days so yeah. he has kind of helped mold that west coast sound and you get to hear it in the album too uh, yeah so yeah good great I'd be producer to see what his production would be like today if he was if he made a record today from scratch I right wonder how he would sound you know yeah that'd be fun to hear yeah hey you follow him on instagram or whatever and see what he's saying him. Because sometimes right. they give hints out, you know, like, oh, the new record, whatever, you know. Right. Yeah, like I'm going to search him out on social media. Well, yeah, I mean, now he's got another EP coming out. Mm -hmm. Something, uh, a ski project. Who knows, well, dude? I don't, it doesn't matter to shit. me. Just put the music out. Yeah. It doesn't have to just only be you and EA Ski. Take those EA Ski tracks and then put them together with the other tracks are doing now make yeah. an album make a double put them all together man even if it has to be double disc Don't double disc double ep doesn't matter yeah bonus tracks whatever you want to do <laughs> just bonus put it tracks. out all right man any final thoughts on this record Superfly? um no not really man um just that you know uh if you haven't heard superfly and you like what you heard, definitely check out, you know, his previous albums, uh, Bangin' West Coast and, damn, what was the other one? That Whoop de Whoop. That Whoop de Whoop. There you go. So, cool uh, title track. I remember that Whoop de Whoop, -whoop, 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 -whoop is just kind of like that old school classic death row flavor. Um, sure, we'll come back around to that at some point. Don't know when, yeah. but uh, yeah, man, good shit. Had fun going over it with you, man. Yeah, man, I enjoyed it. Dope shit, guys. Check it out. Check us out at rapthrowback.com. Hit the archive. Listen to some more of our classic uh, record retrospects. And, uh, hey, another one under the books, man. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Subscribe to us and follow us on that YouTube. That's right, man, 22. Just getting started. So, hey, it's your boy Megatron. I think I'm out. Your boy Dre 40 ounce Soundwave. I'm out. Peace. Peace.